Hello, and welcome to ATP Report. I'm Barry Nussbaum. We have a very special guest today, but before we do, I want to remind all of you in ATP land, if you haven't done so already, please take out your cell phone right now. Do me a favor. Open up a blank text message, and in the address place, put the number 88202, and in the message box down below, just type the simple word truth, T-R-U-T-H, push send. You'll be automatically connected with our text message alert system. It'll sign you up to get all of our content, including today's fantastic guest, absolutely for free, right in the palm of your hand. Okay, thanks for doing it. Our special guest today is Inaz Annie Cyrus. She is the founder of Live Up to Freedom. She is a fabulous producer. She's been with ATP since we started, and she produces all of the content at ATP. She's one of the ranking scholars in the world on jihad, especially in the United States, and how to survive after it. Welcome back, Annie. Thanks for having me back, Barry. Let's talk about America, my country and yours, where everybody in this country knows Kyle Rittenhouse was tried and acquitted, found not guilty of a number of charges stemming from a shooting where three guys in Wisconsin during a riot tried to kill him. Uh, in defending himself, Kyle shot three of them, two died, one lived. And as was said in testimony at the trial, the guy who lived testified truthfully under oath that he had pulled a gun and was advancing on Kyle and intended to kill him. So the jury agreed that this 17 year old, which is his age at the time, acted in self defense and saved his own life. However, the Electronics chain Best Buy and the world's largest producer of jeans, Levi Strauss, are now faced with a customer boycott after their employees were counseled over the Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty verdict. In other words, the company sent out memos telling their employees that racial trauma specialists were available to encourage them to heal because apparently this guy is, well, a white supremacist and a racist, and he should not have, in all of his whiteness, shot three other white guys. Um, what do you make out of all of this? Well, let me start by saying uh, I do want to take a moment to thank the jury who did not let the cancel culture and pressure and uh, tactic of fear get to them. And they stood by our Constitution because this wasn't a trial about Kyle. Our Second Amendment was on trial that day, and I'm very proud of my fellow Americans on that jury. So that being said, Barry, we both know, and hopefully most of our audience by now know, the narrative of racism, uh, sexism, uh, anything ism in America created by the left has nothing to do with facts. It doesn't. It's a completely made up delusion. There's this little bubble they have created. Whenever it doesn't fit the narrative, they will push the person into that bubble, which is racism and white supremacy. For a good chunk of time when this happened, me, myself, Barry, I thought the victims were black. Until I did my study, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. They aren't black. I guess the victims were given honorary black cards. I guess they gave, for example, you know how Will Johnson is not a black guy anymore? I guess they gave his black card to one of the white guys who were killed. This whole thing, first of all, there shouldn't even be a tribe. It was fairly clear it was self-defense, but because left likes to attack us conservatives, they like to attack our constitution and they like to attack those who practice their God-given right. There was a long trial, a lot of taxpayers' money wasted, and now a lot of woke companies have an excuse to get behind the narrative of white supremacy is the biggest threat we face in America. To be honest, that's all there is to it. Well, you know what's really curious? You make a very good point. And I fell for the same thing you did. I, I thought the guys that were trying to kill Kyle were black because the first comments coming out of everyone, including Joe Biden, when he was still a candidate, was a white supremacist shot three guys in Wisconsin during a uh, Black Lives Matter protest march. So I didn't know any better, just like you didn't. The narrative unfortunately, was completely invented. And, and Annie, people are really fighting back mass numbers of Best Buy customers and Levi Strauss consumers are saying enough's enough. This was a case of self-defense. 
The guy would have been killed if he didn't use his rifle to defend himself. He's not a racist. He, he's a white guy that killed white guys. And, and I should add one more thing. All three of the people shot, two killed, one wounded, were multiple convicted felons with a horrible history of violent crime. These guys weren't librarians. These were convicted, adult, repeat, felonious offenders trying to kill Kyle Rittenhouse. So now there's this boycott movement where people are saying, hey, you know what? I'm not a racist because I go to Best Buy and I don't want to be called a racist. I want to go somewhere where my skin color doesn't matter. It's like we've gone back in time. Is this kind of thing going to hurt either of these companies, do you think? Well, uh, honestly, I'm very proud. I'm proud to say I'm actually part of that boycott because when I was buying my brand new broadcasting laptop, I went directly to the company and I, I normally would go to Best Buy, but I didn't. And I agree with everyone who's doing, who's involved with the boycott, because we cannot keep enabling the woke culture. When we do purchase products from woke companies, we are enabling them. And I do strongly believe that if people stick to it, and if this boycott movement, not just these two companies, any other company, if we continue, there will be enough financial damage. Because remember, this is all about money. They are getting paid to be part of woke, uh, part of woke culture. If we do continue boycotting them, I really think that the financial damage will get them to go back to just being a provider of product. Because I don't even know why Best Buy, like, okay, let me ask you this, Barry. Since when Best Buy is part of politics? When did they start? Like, did we elect them? Because I don't vote for Best Buy. It's amazing. And it's not just Best Buy and Levi's. I mean, it's American Airlines. It's Coca-Cola. We've talked about this in the past. These diversity officers that they hire are frequently left-wing progressive radicals, if not outright socialist communists, and they have an agenda. And it, like you said, it doesn't matter if the perpetrator's white and the people getting shot are white. It's all about white supremacy and it makes no sense. I've got another story to ask you about. In Great Britain, Christmas is now off the table in government communications. Let me read you a quote. This is from the government in London. We have been advised by the cabinet office we should no longer use the word Christmas as the government campaign needs to be inclusive and some religions don't celebrate Christmas. Now, what this relates to is in Great Britain, they're pushing very, very hard to vaccinate now with the boosters. And they had put out a press release saying, if you're going for Christmas, make sure you get your booster. Well, the woke culture, Annie, has infected Whitehall, where they run the government. And they want to take the word Christmas out because people might be offended by the word Christmas and therefore not get jab number three. And Boris Johnson, the prime minister, is supporting it. Let's not use that word. Has the UK gone too far? Um, technically not far enough yet, not for the end game, but for me and you, yes. And this is where I'm going to say, you know how the white supremacy agenda or narrative is being pushed out. I want everybody, either if you're in UK or not, listen, what Barry just explained is what we refer to as Islamic supremacy. For one so-called religion, everybody else need to be uh, pretty much oppressed because this is oppression. To me, this is oppression. When there's not only a taught police, but there's out there telling you what are the phrases you're allowed to use. That is tyranny. So everybody needs to be oppressed so Islam and Muslims can feel good about what's coming. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, everybody in UK, Merry Christmas, enjoy your Christmas. But yes, this is ridiculous. I really hope people in UK has started putting banners in front of their houses and apartments with Merry Christmas. Well, 
the dumb news doesn't stop there. Let's go to the campus of Arizona State University. The Students for Justice in Palestine, I, this is so weird. Just hear me out. I'm not making it up. Students for Justice in Palestine, a socialist communist revolutionary organization, which you and I know a lot about, have called on the university's administrators to expel Kyle Rittenhouse, who is now attending there, I think, um, remotely, because he is a, quote, violent, bloodthirsty murderer. This is after he was found not guilty. And they have written to the administrators saying the only way to make the campus safe is to expel him. And they describe their club as, quote, socialist, revolutionary, Marxist, whose mission it is to end capitalism and fight for socialism. So the socialists have merged with the Palestinian jihadis to expel the racist murderer who was found by a jury to be not guilty and to have acted in self-defense. What do you think Arizona State is going to do with these radicals? I'm sorry, can you give me the name of the group one more time? Students for Justice in Palestine is one of them. And the other one is the... Uh, oh, no, that was the one I was looking for, Students for Justice for Palestine. Right. The fact that in America, any university would have a group that is ba based on what doesn't exist because we both know Palestine doesn't exist. That should tell you everything you need to know. But it's interesting that they are calling Kyle a murderer, bloodthirsty murderer, when they are fighting for the people who wrap a suicide vest around a seven-year-old boy and send them in to kill Jews, right? I mean, how far can a hypocrisy go before we all stand and say, wait a minute, you're okay for the self-defense, right? Their, their narrative is Palestinians are, you know, doing this in self-defense, supposedly. So it's okay for a seven-year-old to blow himself up and kill Jews in self-defense, but Kyle is a bloodthirsty murderer. Fine. The hypocrisy is just unbearable. I don't know if I should cry or laugh. As far as the university, I hate to say this, but my money's on, they will, they will kick Kyle out. They will. Because, as I said, if they have such a group that is openly active and even has the right to make requests like that, they are going with the narrative. They will. And, and again, I hope everybody stands behind Kyle because he has done nothing wrong. But my guess is they will move forward and basically kick him out. And if they do, it's a tragedy. It truly is. If they and where do, can people find out about the work you do and follow what you're publishing? Let me add two things before I say that, if you don't mind, if you have time. One, if they do, not only it's tragic, but I right now I will say on behalf of myself as an American citizen and ATP who's fighting for liberty and freedom in America, every American should stand behind Kyle. You should put up a petition. You should go after the university and make them reinstate Kyle's registration. We cannot be quiet anymore. That cannot happen. The second thing is, at the beginning, I did refer to those who were killed or injured by Kyle as victims. I want to quickly explain that. In my eyes, they are victims of the division created in this country by the Democrats. If they would have put an end to this joke of a BLM movement, those felons still wouldn't be on the streets freely at, trying to do what they tried. So in my eyes, everyone involved with this case were victims of socialist Islamist Democrats who hate America. On that note, you can find my work on liveuptofreedom.com, liveuptofreedom.com, or just sign up to American Truth Project because I am here every other week having a good chat with Barry Newsbaum. Well said, thank you. And I advise all of our guests out there, please sign up if you haven't yet. We want you subscribed so you never miss an Annie Cyrus or Barry report. It's always on your cell phone, and it's always free right in the palm of your hand. Thanks for coming on to join us today. For ATP Report, I'm Barry Newsbaum.